All right. Another live stream. Two days in a row. Um, wasn't really planning to do another live stream this soon, but I saw this video and some other related things, and I had to um, say something about it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the thing of him saying that the word Antichrist is not in the Bible. That's a, yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of things I'm going to be saying about this. Um, I'm just going to give it a few minutes here just to let everybody, you know, come along and whatever else. Um, hi to everybody. And um, more nuttiness, more crazy stuff going on. I do have a question. If anybody out there can answer it, I don't really know how to do it. I've seen people do this, though. If they want to reply to somebody, you, I don't know how to do that. How, you know, like where you can have, um, you highlight somebody's name or something, and then you can reply and whatever else um, with the live stream thing. Does anybody know how to do that? Can you just kind of give me a quick description of how that works? If you know what I'm saying. Like obviously I can I can uh, click on different names and show different comments and things but I'm not sure how to uh, what you push to reply to somebody in the comment the live stream thing the whatever symbol followed by their username okay so if I would want to do that let me just try it with you Anthony there oh I did the wrong one there um, I don't know if I did that right. <laughs> okay, I don't think I did it right. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the whole thing. I wanted to. Um, something like that. Okay, whatever. Just thought I'd say something about that. But I'm going to get to the video here because I have a lot of things to cover. But. Um, See, I saw this thing and it's a revelation song and whatever else. And I thought, okay, well, I'll check into it. And, uh, you know, as a lot of times I'm uploading a video, uploading video files and whatever else, um, <clears throat> I will uh, see what's going on on the internet and whatever else. And so I uh, saw this thing, this thing here about the mark of the beast or something like this you know, with Tucker Carlson, which I don't trust that guy at all. He says a lot of good things, but that's the way, you know, devils do it. And so I watched this whole thing today where I was getting other stuff done and I couldn't believe some of the things that they were saying in it. And then what they turned it into. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do a live stream to refute this thing. And I wrote it in the comments of this video here that I would do a live stream. So here it is. Um, because they just pretend that oh, there's no preachers talking about this. They just refuse to talk about it when I've talked about it for years. Right. And there's others that have as well. Right. Um, but this to show you this thing here quickly. Well, first of all, I just watched this other thing here. I just literally watched it as I was waiting for the live stream thing here to go live and earth to God. And, you know, again, what's with the, all the black and this, you know, looks like, the collars of hell, which, you know, I said, why do modern churches, you know, pattern their light of light of uh, things to look like hell? It's really weird. Um, they wear all black and, you know, whatever, kind of like Jesuit priests, not saying he's a Jesuit, but I'm just saying, you know, just kind of strange that they would, you know, go with the, it's kind of like the scripture, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But you get into the music industry. Well, you're going to be doing some evil stuff, but watching through this thing and, and different scenes here. It's all the Samaritan's Purse thing. And there's actually a scene or two with Franklin Graham in it. Yeah, right there he is. Franklin Graham, that compromising devil. 
could do a whole thing on him. I actually did some videos on him. I'm not sure if they're still on my channel or not, but uh, well, let's. I'm gonna watch this thing here. This uh, revelation um, thing. It's one and a half million views. It's going viral. They said, and uh, the errors are just so ridiculous. But I'm not going to play the actual music because of copyright stuff and whatever. I'll just mute it. We don't need to hear it anyhow. It's nonsense. But um, <clears throat> I thought it was interesting. Pow Wow Pictures. It's kind of a, a wolf there. Or maybe an Arctic fox, I guess, or something. But it looks kind of like a wolf to me. So, But let's uh, go back here to the beginning. And he's here playing a guitar on the steps of a church building. <laughs> okay. Problem number one. There are no church buildings in the New Testament. None at all. And he's talking about revelation and he's seeing things again wearing all black uh and he turns around and he goes inside the church building right there walks in and now he's got the orange and the the white there and lightning's flashing and all dramatic and then here comes the devil that's the devil coming with an all black horse um Book, chapter, and verse on that one, please. Where does the Bible say that the devil wears a uh, or rides an all-black horse? And he's the creepy guy and whatever. And now here comes this guy, supposed to be Michael the Archangel. You know, showing a uh, complete ignorance of Scripture here. So here you get this guy, and he's and he's you know, oh, these these are good friends of mine. You know, I had them in the video and things, and, you know, whatever. So here you get. Michael the Archangel, and he's got the power of lightning, you know, on him. And he's coming across, he's not wearing a shirt. Okay. And of course, we have next, you have uh, the devil and Michael, you know, they're going to fight. And oh, he's got feathery wings. Uh, <laughs> there are no feathered winged angels in the entire Bible. Okay. I'll give you a, a real quick scripture on this thing. Um, easy way to debunk the whole feathered wing angels thing. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, be, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Um, is that, would that guy, if this guy showed up at your house, do you think that you wouldn't be aware that he was an angel? Okay. Um, the only mention of feathered wings is back in Zechariah. I think it is. There are two women with the wings of a stork you know um and that's it uh there's no m mention of michael having feathered wings and it gets even better because michael here there's the devil we'll get back to that in a minute um oh look at that he's creating a fireball <laughs> he's got flames you know or a street fighter video game i guess or something he's gonna get, uh, send it at him and uh he controls fire you know so very accurate Mm -hmm. And this is this is all about the book of Revelation. Stuff doesn't even happen in the book of Revelation. There's war in heaven, but not outside of a church building. But um, where is it? Yeah, look, at he's drawing down lightning into his sword there. Okay. Book of Revelation, I don't think so. But Michael, the archangel, he's got tattoos. So, uh, okay. So he's a tattooed angel now with feathery wings on him there. And um, the sword, <laughs> uh, kind of funny. Oh, he's ready to fight. Oh, boy, this is going to be real impressive, I'm sure, here. And there's the devil. Um, actually, if you read the Bible, which I realize that this guy does not know the first thing about, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, not darkness. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. There you go. This isn't Satan. There's no scripture at all saying that Satan's going to be wearing all black. And I'd like to point out the fact that if Satan is wearing all black and this guy's a a Christian musician here or something or he's going to be representing the Lord and he's got 
a Bible under his hand. I guess it's a Bible. Um, wouldn't he want to look more like this guy? You know, with the light on? I just, you know, I don't know. He looks more like he's on his side. Why squabble over details, though? Oh, they're ready to fight. Oh, yeah. Holds up a, a Bible. It is black darkness there. Oh, boy. There's the fight. It got started. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 through 11. Um, uses the King James Bible here. Uh, go to the King James Bible. Except for one word. He changes it. Hmm. People need to look this stuff up. Um, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, uh, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our, accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Um, and they overcame him. He puts in the brethren. There's no word, the brethren, there in verse 11. And they overcame him. Okay, it doesn't say the brethren. He added, they put the brethren there, overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. All right, is what it should say. You can see it right there. They love not their lives unto the death. Exactly what the devil did. He shall not surely die. You know, just add to or take away from the word of God. There you go. That's the way that they do it. But uh, I'm going to go into this little thing here. We're going to just click through it. I wrote down some timestamps. I want to go through this thing pretty quickly here. Um, I'll start out here. And it says, you can see right there, it says, John Rich's song inspired by God. So that nonsense that we just saw back here with the funny little thing, this was inspired by God. Yeah. Okay. Um, but let's go forward here to th about three minutes and 13 seconds. Right about there. Okay, here we go. The book of Revelation throughout. tells the story of the end of history. That's my read. It tells the story about, about the return of Jesus Christ. Yes. It, it says it's telling you what is going to happen prior to him coming back and what's going to happen after he comes back. Lays it out. So how did you decide to write a song about a book of the Bible that most Christian preachers don't want to talk about? I did not. <laughs> okay. How did you decide to, to write a song about a book of the Bible that most Christian preachers don't want to talk about? Huh? Um, excuse me? Here's a... Ruckman's commentary on the book of Revelation. Okay. Um, there's a lot of men that have talked about the book of Revelation. What's this? Uh, you know, there aren't many that want to talk about the book of Revelation. Uh, yes, there are. I mean, again, all you have to do is go to my channel. I'll just go to view your channel here like this. And you go here to this little magnifying glass just to show you how it works. And you go in there and you just type in Revelation. Enter. A whole bunch of, well, there's the new one there, it's still going live. But um, I have a whole bunch of scriptures or uh, studies on Revelation for Bible-believing Christians. Uh, well, preachers, they don't want to talk about it. Uh, well, I have quite a few videos on the book of Revelation. You can watch all the, all these studies, countless videos on it. Um, so that just kind of irritates me. Oh, nobody wants to talk about this. It's some kind of thing that people just don't know, you know, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of preachers that have talked about Revelation. Um, so that's problem number one. And he goes into the whole thing here that he was walking around in the house and just kind of smacked him in the back of the head. And he had to go write it down and it's inspired by God. Uh, it's 
grossly in error, but it's inspired by God. And then he goes on to show just how you know foolish he is. He doesn't understand quite a few things. Let's go back here to about 17. That would be good, 1756 or so. And here's the showing the music video thing. It's coming. Back again. The real war is not Trump and Biden. The real war is not left and right. The real war is not culture war. It says in Ephesians, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principality. Okay. Um, it says in Ephesians chapter six, that's where he's trying to go there. He just misquotes the scriptures all the time. And you know, I get it. Well, he's just quoting from memory and whatever else. Uh, but you still, there's some danger there. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Listen to what he says. Principalities and powers and the rulers of spiritual darkness of this earth, of this world. That is the battle. That's the real battle. And, and they say, you know, in the Bible, it says you can't see that because there's a thin veil between the physical and the spiritual. And what's yes. going on just on the other side of the veil. But when you read Daniel and you read Revelation, it says at some point that veil will be torn, which my song talks about that. And when that veil is torn, you'll be able to see what's going on on the other side of that. And so in the video, you see the devil come blasting through a fiery portal out in the woods of Tennessee on one side of a little country church on a black horse, and he starts running and he looks nasty. It's Nick Searcy, by the way, the actor, uh, my good friend. He plays the devil. He's one of the nicest guys you ever met. So it's funny that he's the devil, but he plays a good one. And on the other side. Um, it's funny that he's the devil. He's a nice guy and whatever. Uh, well, you don't really understand the purpose of the devil. If he shows up, he shows up as an angel of light. He would be a, quote, nice guy. He was nice to Eve. Just deceived her into thinking that, uh, you know, you can change God's word and it's fine. You can be his gods knowing good and evil. Isn't that a good thing? Sure. You know, I mean, the, the fiery portal, I, I can't remember where that's at. I think it's, um, is it, in, uh, uh, yeah, it's not there. It's not in the Bible. Continue. Out of that church out in the woods in Tennessee, this massive beam of energy comes crashing down to the ground and the trees go like this. And out of that blast comes Michael the archangel and he pulls a broadsword out of his sheath. And he start and he grits his teeth. And this guy's got muscles. That's Hollywood Yates, my buddy from California. He comes walking straight towards the devil. And they're coming like this. And I'm standing in the middle. I'm humanity. And here's evil. And here's righteousness. And they are about to clash. And the point of that is to put into people's mind a representation of what is spiritual warfare. I wonder what it actually looks like. And I did the best job I could trying to depict that. But when you see those scenes, I think that's one reason why this song is doing what it's doing, because to my knowledge, nobody's ever even approached this subject in the world of music or video. Uh, I've approached the subject in video, preached about it for many years. Others have as well. I just kind of not do the research on that to make it look like this is some new thing. You just have to see it. This is from God. It's, it's inspired by God. Yeah. But check out what he says coming up here. Amazing. So <laughs> why? <laughs> You're such an actor. You know, Tucker Carlson. Amazing. Sure. Why is it? Um, why is Revelation so hard for people to to grasp, to read, to understand? Uh, because they're lost. That's why you guys don't understand it either. So for thousands of years, um, the prophecies in Revelation and Daniel and other places seemed like such science fiction to people. They just couldn't understand how these things are even possible, including my own dad, who's been preaching since he was about 19. He's in his early 70s now. And he said, yeah, John, you know, just never could understand how some of these things were possible. For instance, uh, why would a preacher, been preaching all his life, say that about the book of Revelation? <clears throat> Continue here. The mark of the beast. How is it possible, we would all say, that you could track every human being in the world and know where they are and how they get their money and where they spend their money. I mean, that's just impossible. And here we sit going, oh no, they're tracking us right now. They know exactly where we spend our money and where we get our money. Because it says 
you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. You could you could replace the word beast with system. Revelation. Oh, replace the word beast with the word system. Oh, you mean change the word of God? Well, listen. It says that. Oh, yeah. Without the mark. You won't be able to buy or sell. Unless you bear the mark of the beast. Unless you bear the mark of the beast. Um, you have to bear the mark of the beast. The Bible says that. I've been harping on this thing for so many years. You have to bear the mark. And he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, for his number is six hundred three score and six. Where does it say bear the mark? The Bible says that. Anytime somebody says the Bible says and then they give something that's not found in scripture, you're dealing with a liar. It's just so simple. Amazing. But listen to this. And when you when you go back and look that up in the Hebrew, it's talking about the global power that's in place at that point. The <laughs> uh, okay buddy okay um what's his name here john rich john rich i want you to take off your stupid little black cowboy hat and you need to put a dunce cap on because you're a dunce all right when you look it up in the hebrew all right um here we have greek and hebrew a masoretic hebrew and texas receptus put together okay here we have the Old Testament. It's written in Hebrew. Here we have the New Testament. It's written in Greek. Okay. If you look it up in the Hebrew, there is no Hebrew to support things about the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation. Revelation was written in Greek. <laughs> you know, and people just watching, you know, this, this garbage and they, wow. If you, the original Hebrew had it a certain way, man, it's amazing. Man, this guy's a scholar. <laughs> if you look it up in the Hebrew, uh, you know, and at first I, I watch this stuff and I say, okay, you know, I try to have a little bit of grace. Okay. They're at least they're talking about the Bible. They're talking about the Lord and, uh, you know, okay. Maybe he just doesn't know he's, they're trying to find that. And then my grace goes away after a while because it's just plain deception. And you'll, I'll show you that here. So let's zip ahead to 31 minutes. Here, we'll go there. And then there's an advertisement, I think, coming up soon here before real long. But let's listen to this. The ones who have my name, who bear my name, Christians, if they will repent and turn from their wicked ways and humble themselves, I will come heal their land. So, so pulls off the second Chronicles 714. They all like to do that. And they never talk about the big sacrifice that King Solomon made, uh, just millions of dollars worth of animals being sacrificed in order for God to forgive them and heal their land. They won't talk about that. But he gets on the thing here that Christians are supposed to be judged. And who's willing to judge the Christians? I don't know anybody that, you know, any of these preachers, they don't want to do that. Let's continue. So the answer to your question is, for a very long period of time in this country, we've not had any type of persecution or horrible things happening that okay again modern christians they never they, the christians are not persecuted here in america those of us that are genuinely saved we get persecuted we have family turn against us we get fired from jobs we you know all kinds of bad stuff happens to us you know some are attacked so there's no persecution for the christians they don't even have a concept about this and you know a lot of what he's saying coming up here He's he's going to be right in what he's saying. He's a posty. He cuts on the you know the pre-trib rapture, quote unquote. Well, I'll show you that here as we continue. And he's actually right. He will be going into the time of, of you know Jacob's trouble, book of Revelation. He will actually see the Antichrist. So he's right on that. You know, and he doesn't know anything about, about Christian persecution because he's not one. Let's continue. That would that would humble a Christian like that and, and refocus them to understand who he actually is. And so because of that, all these bad things are happening. Now, that is not going to be preached in a church. I promise you, Tucker, no preacher is going to say, it's our fault that this is happening. Why? Because it puts the onus on 
them on me, on you, on yeah, Christians. They right. don't want to have to take that. What do you, it can't be my fault. This is all the devil's work. Well, it says right here, if my people, if my uh -huh. So there's no, there's no Christians out there, you know, attacking Christians. You know, no, none of these preachers out there, none of them, they, they don't attack Christians. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> judgment seat of Christ, call to judgment, God's blessing and judgment. I talked about it there and there, both getting into the thing of we need to judge ourselves, uh, the judgment. If judgment come, it must begin at the, the house of God. Yes, I have talked about it. Okay, it's right there, available on YouTube. All you have to do is just, before you can make a statement, there are no preachers, no preachers talking about this. Do a quick study. You know, just do a quick little search or something like that. But you see, that's not what these guys are about. Where's the thing at? There it is. Okay. So uh, just, again, another bunch of ridiculous nonsense. I'll let it play a little bit my, further It here. says it right there. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, dude, read what it says. I mean, for too long, preachers have gone in and, and sanded the edges off of these very literal and very powerful verses to suit the narrative. It's not, it's not unlike uh, what they do in the media. Okay, and it gets into that. It goes off on that tangent there. But uh, yeah, that's that's the way it is it, because you're hanging out with these modern churches, the ones that use the Vatican versions and are after your money. But to say there are no preachers out there that will, you know, speak against people's sins and things, that's not true. I take that to be a very uh, to be very insulting. Okay, about right here. Play the next thing saying anything the bible says uh no man knows the time nor the hour when jesus will no man knows the day or the hour it's a problem with the uh, quoting scripture return and that's correct nobody knows can i back up 200 years gosh, with you real quick do. i know you love history yes 200 years ago basically in 1830 1820 actually but very wealthy, very charismatic preacher named John Darby, D-A-R. I never heard of John Darby being very wealthy. It's the first I've ever heard this. And he tries to say that he was funded by the Rothschilds. I've, again, I've never heard that. So, <laughs> okay. Or B-Y. Came with this doctrine that's now referred to as the secret rapture or the pre-tribulation rapture. And that message took off. Why wouldn't it? I mean, who doesn't want to hear that we'll all be out of here before anything bad happens? That's a great message. That'll that'll pack the pews right there. I love it. And and it allowed them to say, for all we know, the rapture could happen before this church service ends right now. So you better move. And I guess to that end, it had a great effect. A lot of people, a lot of people got saved over that. Who came up with the idea? Yeah, it goes into a little ad thing there. We'll skip ahead to 41 minutes and 43 seconds. Right in there somewhere. <clears throat> Okay. You can be proud to do business with. A few decades after that, a guy named C.I. Schofield. Have you ever heard of a Schofield Bible? Yes, I have. Okay. So C.I. Schofield was a, basically a student of John Darby, and he adopted that part of the doctrine, and he incorporated that into the Bible. It was the first Bible ever made that had study notes with it. We have yes. all kinds of Bibles now that have you know, concordances and study notes and all kinds of stuff that go along. But this was the first one that was ever, ever made. It became so popular. Every Christian was reading it. Every minister was reading it. And this, this continues today to this exact second. My own dad, when he went uh, in seminary and was, you know, wanting to become a, a minister, they said, make sure you have a Schofield Bible. Now, when you come to class, have your Schofield Bible. Schofield Bible also adopted that, that entire John Darby philosophy of, Christians will not be here when the bad stuff starts to happen. And most Christians still believe that. Matter of fact, a lot of my friends that are Christians are going to watch this interview are probably right now going, hang on a minute. Now, hang on. So this is a this is pushing back against a doctrine that's been in existence now for coming up on 200 years. Um, <clears throat> again, I've showed the proof. It's been around a lot longer, hundreds of years. Um, guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just lying. 
the whole uh, old John Nelson Darby created it. No, he didn't. Um, the Jesuits created it. You know, Francisco Ribeiro and and uh, Manuela Cunza, and I, I've answered it all. Again, there are no preachers preaching about this. You're a liar. That's a lie. Okay, you're not doing the research. Right? There are plenty of preachers, and ones other than me, by the way, too. All right, so just nonsense. And again, it doesn't matter. I don't care if the Pope came out and said that there will be a pre-trib rapture. You search the scriptures. What, do, what does the Bible say? Which I've answered all of those objections to the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. But we'll continue here a little bit more. The problem with that doctrine is there's a, several places in the Bible where it talks about what's going to happen prior to Jesus Christ coming back to the earth. When he does come back, that is when what we call the rapture happens. The word rapture is nowhere in the Bible. It talks about us being caught up with him and pulled out of here, and then and then the ultimate wrath is poured out on this planet. That's what we call the rapture. But the, So that's not in debate. The question is, what happened? Uh, again, I answered so many times I've answered this. Oh, there's no wrath before, you know, the, uh, the catching up happens, and then the rapture, or the wrath comes after that. Uh, well, the Antichrist being unleashed on the earth is wrath, okay? War, you know, and everything else, uh, the, the red horse rider, the famine, and then death and hell, it's all wrath, <laughs> okay? Right at the beginning, John goes up before all that stuff gets started. Think, okay? Of course, they're lost. They can't think. But, uh, you know, they're going to deceive people. So that's why I'm making this video. But let's continue here a little bit further. What happens leading up to that? It's a good question to ask, right? For some reason, nobody ever preaches that. <laughs> nobody ever preaches that. I've just done hundreds of sermons on it, all available for free, not monetized. I don't make money off of it and whatever else. It's all available. You can do the search. You can go out and look it up. Nobody ever preaches this stuff. Yeah, and I, as soon as I saw this guy doing this, I thought he's going to go to Matthew chapter 24. He does later on in the thing. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, he does later on in the thing. It's just so predictable. But see, to the papists out there, the church has to stay on the earth through what's coming. It's just inconceivable that the church of Jesus Christ would be called up and then the Lord starts to deal with the nation of Israel and Roman Catholicism and pouring out his judgment and wrath on them. But continue a little bit further here. They don't want to talk about what all happens prior to it. So if I can, can I just read if we have time? That's why I love the thought of this but interview. Just Oh, I do too. But just to be clear, you're, what you're saying is the Schofield Bible, its theology is deceptive. I'm saying that the same way the media takes a factual situation and twists it and gives you a version of it, which we all know we're force fed every single day. The same exact tactic was used in 1830 by John Darby. And guess who he was connected to, by the way? The Rothschilds. <laughs> the Rothschilds. Interesting. Yeah. In interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, where's your proof? Uh, oh, that's right. It didn't show any. <laughs> Oops. Um, hmm. Yeah. Um, spooking from a guy. He was connected to the Rothschilds. He was connected to the Rothschilds. Well, why don't we talk about the music industry that you're part of there, stupid? You know, it never ceases to amaze me how easy it is for devils like this to deceive people. Sitting there all in black. Yeah, I'm, I work with Hollywood, and uh, John Nelson Darby was funded by the Rothschilds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't show you any proof of it, but you can just uh, you can find it out. Yeah. Charles family back in the day. That he did the same exact tactic and twisted that. I don't know why he did that. It worked because it took off. And I mean, it, it was, there were churches popping up everywhere right after that. I'm saying that, including me, including my own father, for a long time, that's what we believe too. But when you start actually going back and reading line by line by line what is said that will be leading up to Jesus coming back, which is when the rapture happens, it's, a, it's the inverse of what John Darby put down. I didn't know that. Um. I didn't know that. Yeah. And Tucker Carlson here is, oh, I, I just started reading the Bible here recently and things and whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're trying to get to understand it so that you can deceive more people. But um, yeah, 
Let's continue here. That Christians have this idea that they're going to be out of here before any of the things that are prophesied about happen. Why is that dangerous? Okay, that's a lie right there. Again, there are things that are prophesied in the Pauline epistles that we will see, like perilous times shall come. Uh, men shall be lovers, lovers of their own selves. The time will come when they will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There's a lot of things. So to say Christians will be out of, be out of here before prophetic stuff happens, that's not true. But look at John. The Apostle John went up before the Antichrist is revealed. And that's scripture. Again, I've preached on that thing over and over again. Let's continue. It's dangerous because when the mark of the beast shows up, when the son of perdition shows up, who is who we refer to as the Antichrist, when those things happen and they're still here, they'll say, well, that can't be the mark of the beast. That can't be the Antichrist because I'm still here. What danger does that put someone in? That's not the mark of the beast because I'm still here. So go ahead, sign me up. Think of uh, it. Really? So the, the Christians wouldn't have any more discernment than that? And I've talked about this again. This is another one of the great proofs that proves that we will not be here. We cannot be here because it would cause the Bible to contradict. I'll show you that in a minute, but let's just finish here. With this it goes to 53 seconds. About the, the level of danger with that. And it has not existed, in my opinion, until recently since technology has gotten to the point to actually execute these things. So if, if you got a second, can I, can I read something for you or unless you want to ask me something? Yeah, so... Uh, let uh, okay, yeah, uh, distraction time here, whatever, new story about Donald Trump or something coming in. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, one of the greatest proofs that proves that Christians cannot be here for the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast system, Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man, any man, Worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest uh, day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Notice it says whosoever. And up here it says any man. So there are no exceptions. You take the mark, worship the beast in his image, you will end up in hell. And ultimately then in the lake of fire. Lake of fire comes after hell. Lake of fire is after Revelation chapter 20. Just to explain that. All right. So right there makes it very clear that anybody living in the time of Jacob's trouble that takes the mark, worships the beast in his image, goes to hell. Okay. But now how do you work that out with doctrine in the Pauline epistles for us. Um, verse 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You cannot lose your salvation when God saves you. All right? Um, Oh, man, my, my brain's I'm trying to think of which verse it is here in Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, I'm just, all this stuff, you know, I'm looking at my notes and everything else here. Um, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Um, it's the verse I'm looking for. Oh, brother, I cannot think about it. Which verse is it? Okay, verse 30. Sorry about that. Uh, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit. So if what this liar just said there, that a Christian will be deceived, and they'll go in and they'll say, well, it can't be the Antichrist. Like we wouldn't have discernment for that, but you can't be the Antichrist, so I'll take the mark. And then they are what? They lose their salvation when it's sealed. See, it's two different dispensations. The time of Jacob's trouble is not the same as what we are in currently right now. Again, lots of preaching on that. It's right there for you if you want to hear it. 
Now let's go to uh, 53 minutes and 12 seconds. Right in this area here. And here he's getting into 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Since 1830, people have believed this, that you're going to be out of here before any of the bad stuff happens. It just doesn't say that. So if you can give me enough time to read. Oh, my this gosh, right please. Here. I'm, I'm okay. fascinated. This is 2 Thessalonians 2, <laughs> which doesn't get preached very much. Doesn't get preached very much. It uh, doesn't get preached very much, you know. Um, <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 2. Okay, I didn't do it on my own channel. But it uh, doesn't get preached very much. I'll just show it this way. Right there is me. There's another one there. I have no idea what these others are saying, but you know, there I am, 13,000 views on that. Proves that no Christian will see the Antichrist. And it does. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Okay? Not that difficult to figure it out. But I'll just put this up here. I won't do the whole thing because we don't need to be vexed by his new version stuff. But Second Thessalonians chapter 2. All right. Now he's reading from some, I don't know what kind of new version, Vatican version thing that he's reading from but let's just follow along for a little bit here and then i'll skip ahead this is paul wrote this now brethren concerning the coming of our lord jesus christ and our gathering together to him meaning his second coming we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as is from us as though the day of christ had come let no, no one hand. deceive you by any means for that day the day he comes back, will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who is who we refer to as the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple or in the place of God, showing himself that he is God. Jesus hadn't come back yet. This is happening. Do you not remember when I was still with you? I told you these things. And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. In his For own the mystery time. of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, meaning it's being held back. And uh, It's held back by what? Okay, let's go with your new version there. He who now restrains will be there until he be taken out of the way. So, okay, what's it talking about? Who's the restrainer? Okay, I mean, obviously a satanic new version changing all kinds of stuff, you know, from the King James Bible. But even if you go with the new version, it still says that there's a restrainer there that's keeping the Antichrist from showing up. Yeah, so let's go to 57 minutes and 40 seconds. Right in that area right there. Listen to what he says. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Which means what? lying. The, the, yeah, the, the son of perdition is who they we would refer to as the Antichrist. The word Antichrist doesn't exist in the Bible either. Neither does. Okay. <laughs> uh, the word Antichrist, I know one of you brought that up right at the very beginning of this live stream. The word Antichrist doesn't even appear in the Bible. Antichrist. One, two, three, four references to Antichrist. The word Antichrist doesn't appear in the Bible. Well, you know, in your Vatican version or whatever, it probably doesn't, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, again, I, I try to have grace early on, but it just gets worse and worse and this militant posty stuff and we're going through it we have to go through it you know because we have to be purified and and um you know the church can't just be taken out or anything i mean that would mean that the blood of jesus christ cleansed them from all their sins and they don't need further purification and that would be heresy because you know christians have to suffer to to merit salvation and and you know endure to the end to be saved and you know see that and i have been answering this stuff for years i mean post-trib rapture thieves my studies on that you go back to 2009, 2010, I was refuting these people. Back then, I had a hard time finding posties that I could refute. 
you know, watching their videos and playing the audio when I was on Sermon Audio many years before they kicked me off. <laughs> uh, but I've been answering these guys for years. Stephen Andersnake with all this stuff after the tribulation. You know, they come out and they say, the Bible says after the tribulation. That proves that it's the rapture is after the tribulation. Well, you'll read Matthew chapter 24 there. It doesn't say the rapture is after the tribulation. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days. And it talks about the second coming. And again, I can sit here for hours and just go through and expound all the different scriptures on proving that the catching up the resurrection of the body of Christ is before the time of Jacob's trouble. But I've already done all the studies. So it's up to you to do your due diligence and study it for yourself. If you want to know, it's one of the most beautiful truths that there is. You read the book of Revelation, you don't have to be scared about it. You don't have to look at that and go, oh, how are we going to make it? Oh, no, what are we going to do? You know, No, we're not going to be here. We go up with John, right? We're already up there. 24 elders and then the multitude around the throne. You know, okay, the angels around the throne. In the resurrection, we are as the angels of God. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. We are the bride of Christ. We are going to be presented as a chaste virgin to Jesus Christ. Not down here on the earth with a bunch of people that rejected Jesus and the Lord's just up there. Hey, sorry about this. You know, my beloved bride, uh, smack, smack, you know, hitting us around. Oh, you know, you took the mark. Well, sorry. I have to remove the seal of the Holy Spirit from you. You're going to go to hell now and burn forever. Sorry about that. You lived for me all those years. And, you know, you're trying to follow 1 Timothy 5, 8. If any provide not for his own, he have, you know, deny the faith and is worse than an infidel. You know, especially they have his own house. Uh, sorry about that. You were trying to provide for your own and took the mark, and but I had, I had to take your, you know, seal of the Holy Spirit off of you. Man, it's so ridiculous. Um, let's see what are we playing here too? Play this a little bit more. Does rapture? That's just when we read this throughout history. Really, the word antichrist is not in there. Mm -mm. Huh. <laughs> really, the word antichrist isn't in there. Really? Mm -mm. No, it's not in there. Four times. But I'll stop it here with uh, what Tucker Carlson has to say, because he really kind of says it appropriately here. 101.35, and here he gets into the thing of uh, Halo, or Halo or Halo, whatever it is, number one prayer app. Yeah, Roman Catholic. You want to see some good stuff on that? Stranger Than Fiction has a good video showing the uh, Jonathan Rumi or whatever the guy's name is, the guy that plays the you know Jesus in The Chosen, just a total Catholic knight devil. And he's in this halo thing, you know, all that stuff. Just a bunch of papist nonsense. But let's listen here what uh, Tucker Carlson gives a little Masonic shout out to his his uh, buddies. Okay, listen to what he says. Marker that seems, well, I'll ask you, do you think this is a fair way to judge? God creates order out of chaos, right? God creates order out of chaos. Right, Ordo Ab Cal, okay, Masonic, one of their Masada or their uh, mottos and things. God creates order out of chaos. I mean, Lucifer, your God, order out of chaos. So play a little bit more. That's beginning of Genesis, and so <laughs> beginning of Genesis. Uh, no, Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There's no chaos there. Again, the whole Masonic, their motto here, Ordo Op Cal, uh, you create a chaos, you create problems and trouble, and then you say, here's the solution, the Hegelian dialectic. You know what I'm talking about there. So play a little bit more here. Order and chaos are really significant markers for whether something is from God or, or not. And if you get a lot of chaos, like that's probably not, from God, right? Probably not. <laughs> Talk about the book of Revelation. You know, I, if there's a lot of chaos, it, it probably isn't from God. It, probably not. Yeah, you know, um, but, you know, and he goes on to say, but, you know, the book of Revelation, they're kind of, you know, God's judging the wicked and punishing the wicked. So, you know, in that one case, I guess, or something. And I mean, the errors are just so numerous in this whole thing. I didn't want to make a big, long, huge video here, but uh, just <laughs> just cracks me up, this whole thing.
Uh, there's just no preachers out there preaching about this stuff, and there's nobody's talking about this. Nobody has the guts to say these things, and and um, you can learn, you know, doctrine from music videos, you know, uh, magic music videos that have ridiculous nonsense in them. Um, so I'm not even going to go through the lyrics of this whole stupid song thing here. I mean, this should be enough right there to say, okay, yeah, not legitimate church building dressed all in black. Satan's a bad guy throwing, you know, balls of fire. You know, when they, I remember the street fighter video game when I was a teenager and the guy goes, you can, or something like this, you know, Ryu or something. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the devil. Okay, yeah, and uh, Michael the Archangel over here, he's got the lightning-powered sword with his his tattoos and his bare chest and his feathery wings so he can fly up in the air when Satan throws the fireballs at him. <laughs> but, you know, it's it gets so ridiculous after a while, you just have to laugh at it. You know, it's evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And, of course, they're both, you know, Trump, Trump, Trump you know, supporters and all this stuff, but anyhow, just thought I'd share that with everybody, hope everybody has a good uh, rest of the day, stand by the word, brother, brethren, um, so that'll be it, and we'll see in upcoming coming videos, I just recorded three, I think, today, so three pretty good videos coming out here in the studio, I'll be getting back to doing some walk and talk ones here before real long, um, so, uh, but see everybody later. Thank you for watching.